What's up, everyone? And welcome to That Crypto Hustle, a community podcast and a one-stop shop where visionaries, entrepreneurs, and hustlers share their blockchain and cryptocurrency expertise. I'm your host, Luna Vega, a digital marketer turned crypto addict, and my goal is to help spread blockchain and cryptocurrency awareness, all while fostering collaboration between all of us. If you dig the show, make sure to give us a review on iTunes, all while following us on Instagram, YouTube, and or Twitter. Let's do this. <laughs> Luna here, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Hustle Podcast. Super excited about today's show and today's cast. Hey, Morton, how's it going? Hey, Luna. All good here. Thank you very much for having me. Very excited to be on the show as well. Yeah, it's such a fun time. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of airdropping. So dramatic. Yeah, but yeah, that sounds good. You're the person to speak about that as you're the founder of Airdrop Alert, which is a site essentially, well, where you can find out about different airdrops going on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're essentially, we're a marketplace, right, where projects can promote their airdrops and users can find them. When did you start the Airdrop Alert? Uh, we started the site in uh, June 2017. The co-founder and I, we were traveling the world. Uh, I've been, uh, I talked to a lot of travelers about Bitcoin and Ethereum, but it's very difficult to have them experiment with it. And then uh, by coincidence, we found out about Airdrops and I talked to a few travelers and now they were excited to to, to experiment with it, you know, get a few coins and see what's up with this blockchain thing. So yeah, after some research, there was really nothing about this online. So yeah, we just started a site to see where it goes. And so, yeah, let's talk about ICO Bench because I think that's where a lot of the negative when it comes to airdrops come. Like that's one of the elements of it where there's rumors that they were chilling coins and getting hefty sums to promote different coins and projects that weren't necessarily legitimate, if you will. And I'm sure a lot of that happened throughout the industry in 2017 when we were seeing a majority of the bear market. So you've been yeah. in the crypto space for a while. What's your overall overview? Like, has this hurt your business? Uh, or do you think there's opportunities to start having more positive impact when it comes to airdrops? Yeah, it depends where you want to, like what kind of policies you have as a business as ICO Bench, which is also a marketplace. Um, we also like started evolving our policies. Basically in the beginning, we were just happy to promote free coins because there were so little of them. Um, so we, we had coins on the side like Ethereum Blue and we were, we were a bit naive, like, okay, What's the worst that can happen? People are getting some free coins. But later you see, uh, you find out, oh, some of these projects are scamming or trying to scam people in the later stages. So we try to adapt our policy, listing policies according to that. But it's definitely a, a industry where you have to uh, adapt constantly. Uh, scammers are getting smarter. Um, you have to adjust and go basically where you stand. Uh, and right now, uh, yeah. So I was going to ask you, like, what are some of the dangers of acquiring uh, different coins that you guys are promoting? And what are some of the benefits? Well, the dangers is like back in 2017, we saw, uh, we regularly saw the projects, they changed their airdrop form and then asked for private keys instead of Ethereum addresses. And this is a super obvious scam. Uh, and by coincidence, this happened again last week. Uh, luckily for a project we didn't list, uh, we refused it for listing and we saw it happening. Um, but now you see uh, it's more of the um, data, people, uh, projects that collect data and then sell it. Uh, we have these several emails that we use to test out airdrops. And then you get emails from companies you never signed up for. So you know data has been sold from projects we tested the uh, airdrops for and we don't know which one. Um, so this is a danger, data breaches, uh, software with malware in it, uh, stuff like that. So what do you think can be done to try to fix that moving forward? Uh, personally, I would like to see airdrops happen in a later stage. Uh, right now it's mostly done by ICOs. Um, so yeah, if you're an ICO and you're raising money, you need to uh, create some buzz and hype and 
get some, get a community going. But it's and also really better for a user acquisition strategy. And when do you need users? When you have a product. Um, so and then there's the the risk for the users is also much lower. If you're in in a later stage project is going, you get some tokens on the platform, then everything should be fine. So hopefully we will see this happening more and more later. Right. And I mean, from a marketing standpoint, I know the industry doesn't feel as confident doing airdrops as they used to. Like you mentioned, the fact that a lot of ICOs go for that model. Do you think STOs in the future will be open to doing airdrop? Was there too many regulations involved for them to do that? I think the second one, I know the SEC in 1999, they uh, put out a sheet that you can't give away free stocks. Now a security could be considered under the same regulations. So I would definitely advise against doing an airdrop for an STO. However, I do see a lot of projects, they make two coins. So they make a security coin and then make a utility token for on the platform. Um, so in that case, it can be used for the utility token. However, when the product's finished. Right. So why did you come up with, I mean, I, I know you mentioned the fact that when you were traveling, a lot of people wanted or were interested about Bitcoin and the industry. And that's kind of like how you came up with the idea. But what are some of the other benefits of perhaps taking the risk of grabbing some of these airdrops? I mean, is there projects that you know firsthand that have blown up? I mean, maybe we can even talk about oh, yeah, BitTorrent. <laughs> Oh yeah, BitTorrent, uh, we can get to that in a bit because uh, I've been following them and they're doing an amazing job. So um, what do you think uh, made them have such an amazing uh, like airdropping system that really worked for them versus other projects? And so they are doing an airdrop until 2025. So they are spreading their user acquisition over a long period of time. So they, uh, Tron, they acquired BitTorrent uh, which already has a user base of 100 million people, I, I believe, or even more maybe. And the token is going to be used on the platform, I think, for faster downloads. So if people give up bandwidth and uh, are seeding more. So there's a usability for the product. And then Tron, uh, Justin Son, I think he's probably a marketing genius. Um, but I saw from the get-go that he had relationships with all the bigger exchanges in Asia, because all of them started supporting the airdrop. And now all of them are doing trading competitions or small giveaways surrounding the same airdrop. So what, he, what they are doing is they don't do a one go airdrop. What a lot of the ICOs do, they do an airdrop and then they, they sit and wait to see what happens. But Justin Sun, like every six hours, there's another promotion for BitTorrent, another giveaway, another competition. Um, so he's really hyping it. And I think uh, he's probably spending a lot of money or he's very good at networking. Uh, but what it's doing is very interesting to follow, yeah. But they also had a really strong community prior. BitTorrent or yeah. Tron? BitTorrent. Yeah, I believe that. I've not used that uh, before, but um, it's, it's, I think uTorrent is also connected to that. I've used that. Um, but yeah, I believe that. I mean, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, file sharing, uh, I've used it since Napster was born. Um, I think it's great. Uh, it's kind of... It's something that belongs on the blockchain too, right? Like peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, trying to avoid middlemen and stuff. Uh, so I think it's a great idea. It was a very smart move by uh, Justin and Trump to uh, acquire this. Um, also for the marketing reasons, right? Uh, now they can say they have the most users on the blockchain, even more than Ethereum, just because they acquired a big company like this. Do you think that partnering with Binance was part of the success? Yeah, I don't know the full details on that. I saw the ICO sold out really fast. Um, but yeah, Binance is a huge exchange, a huge name. People trust the brand name as well. Um, so if you have uh, exchanges like Coinbase, Binance, uh, Bitstamp or Kraken or something, if you get like a huge exchange back in your token and promotion, uh, yeah, that that's just validates the, the project basically. It gives it a big stamp of uh, validation on it. So what are some of the things you look for when taking on projects and promoting them on your platform? Uh, yeah, we have a due diligence team. I'm not part of that. Um, we usually, um, we have a list of airdrops that we refuse. I can go through that quickly to see why not. Um, I see a lot of uh, the team info is inadequate. 
Uh, we do have a KYC for clients. Um, if they don't, they can opt not to KYC. However, we will display on the site that they didn't complete it. So the user knows that we never got that password, but we can only verify through the public channels, which are LinkedIn and uh, stuff like that. But it's usually, um, we usually scan everything that's public. So we, we read the white papers, we check the websites, we check out the team, the socials, we fact check, basically. You, you'll be surprised uh, how many uh, white papers are copies or addresses that don't exist or LinkedIn profiles that are brand new, but are supposedly CEO at several companies. And these are very um, straightforward things, but uh, you just have to spend some time. I think uh, for every airdrop that gets listed, about four or five hours is spent on due diligence. Um, so yeah, we're just fact checking, contacting the team and see what happens. And I can say, I can tell you about 65% uh, does not get listed. So we and, list about and just because they don't go through your criteria. Yeah, we're we just fact checking. And if we can't verify the facts, then they don't get listed. Um, yeah, you have other sites that do list all the projects. I think it's a bit risky for their users because I think we're attracting a lot of new users into the blockchain, like the story I told you before. And then it's very difficult for me to understand why you would try to promote scam projects um, to new users you're just gonna if they get scammed once they won't come back again uh, and That's especially what happened in 2017 a lot of people feel they yeah. got scammed and now we're cleaning up the mess yeah this uh, this market has been good to uh, like cut out all the bad projects because um, if they don't raise money uh, they're less likely to come but if there's money to be made there will always be hustlers and scammers trying to make money um, and even on the airdrop side of the user side, you had a lot of people trying to create bots to join airdrops. So they were trying to get tokens from the project. Um, so that was also a funny development that we saw throughout 2018 that uh, that was becoming a bigger problem. But that problem is going away now uh, because the projects are getting better at verifying. There's, there's more K projects that uh, require KYC to get the airdrop and stuff like that. So if you need to KYC, your airdrop bot is useless. So what's like the white of widest thing that you experience in 2017? Just uh, one specific example you can share with us. Um, yeah, one of the first airdrops we did was uh, Oyster Pro. Uh, we did the whole project, the whole airdrop for them. That was our first one as well. Um, and the ICO did very bad. It didn't raise any money. However, then we thought, okay, that's a shame, but we're still gonna add up the tokens to the people. And then um, a few weeks later, people on the forums thought Oyster was kind of a hidden gem because it did, didn't uh, hidden gem because it didn't uh, raise any money with the ICO, but people thought the project was valuable. So the price started increasing, and the only people that had the tokens were the people that participated in the airdrop. <laughs> so the price kept going up, and all the airdrop hunters uh, they became very rich or rich enough uh, for an airdrop at least. Yeah. So that was like the crazy. price should be what 200%? <laughs> I think one one airdrop was worth 10k at the peak. Wow. Yeah, and that's a lot of money for people uh, that are collecting airdrops. But yeah, that's obviously obviously like one of those one-off stories that you don't see happening too many times. So I don't want to get all the people excited uh, that well, this is a hidden like gold airdrop. Mine. It's somewhere like collecting stamps and hoping that one of the airdrops will be beneficial to you. What's in it, it for the user when they're collecting airdrops? Like how much does it usually cost? Does it really depend on a case per case? Yeah, so uh, it depends on the project basically. Um, you see you see, some project gives away 25 cents and some give away $100. Um, so it depends, I guess it's for the project to decide uh, how much do, you, do they want to spend on a user? How much will they do they expect to get back from it, you know, like user acquisition cost and user revenue and user lifespan. It's a calculation the project has to make. And um, so it's up to the project, uh, but we see a right very, and it's not really, you can't really say that the more money, the more people join. You definitely see some projects give away too much, too much money in my opinion, but not be successful. And you see some projects that give very little, but get a huge uh, hype around. So it's not per se the more dollars, the better success. 
so what about you like in general as a business because like I meant like we mentioned a lot of projects are more are going more the security route now yeah there's less and less ICO I'm sure that we're going to continue seeing initial coin offerings but so how's that sort of like impacted things for you guys uh, we still see, we get about 180 requests per month for an airdrop listing. So there's still a bunch of projects to do airdrops. We do see a, a very large uptick in dApps. So decentralized apps, uh, usually they have a product ready and this, they're looking for users. So they are looking in, in, at airdrops now as a user acquirement strategy. Uh, and I believe that's good. Um, our traffic had a hit from like July till November, but since then we're stabilizing. So we, we, st we still have a steady client and user uh, site that are both uh, interested in joining and giving airdrops. Um, however, we are looking at this and developing new different marketplaces that are not so ICO related. Because um, obviously we see a problem uh, or not really a problem, but we do have a concern of the ICO market that might decline. And for that, we want to hatch, uh, hatch our batch basically and create some new marketplaces for the blockchain world, not per se ICO related. Right. Could there be a marketplace for securities? I mean, I know that we already said that they can't airdrop, but do you think perhaps there'll be new regulations in place? Um, yeah, of course, there can be a marketplace, but I think like um, like an ICO bench, why can't it uh, list security offerings you know i think they already do um so these kind of sites can easily uh add that and you don't need a whole new site you don't need an seo bench which will do exactly the same basically so you just have the existing brands that can facilitate the needs of that market i think so for someone who's completely fresh doesn't have much experience with crypto they might have purchased a few coins back in late 2017 if they're interested in increasing their crypto portfolio and they come across your site, what's a recommendation you have for beginners? I would say um, we created the knowledge base exactly for this kind of audience you're speaking. So I would say check out the knowledge base and see the topics where you need help. For example, like security tips or how to make a transaction or how to create a wallet. Those kind of things you definitely need to read to make sure you don't make mistakes. Uh, and then I would just try and collect a few airdrops to see how it goes, like uh, play around a bit, you know, play around with the tokens, see what increases in value, what doesn't. Um, there's definitely a bunch of interesting projects giving away free coins. And the information we, we put on the sites is very extensive. So I would advise, don't hope for like 10k airdrops, just join a few and see, join, join the products you like, basically. Uh, like, because yeah, I mean, you like, huh? And I think that's kind of like the fine line about crypto is the fact that if you start having influencers about a specific project, well, then obviously it's going to help the project. And yeah. I don't know. I mean, and I'm in the finance world, we kind of experience the same thing. So I don't know. It's just like this really weird fine line. I'm wondering if we're ever going to be able to fully judge a project for its worth. Do you see what I mean? Because like a hype is a really big component of things. What's yeah. your view about that? You think it's a positive? You think it's a negative? Um, yeah, it depends. Obviously, it depends on your perspective, right? If you are trying to invest, it can be a very negative thing if all the projects are hyped because you're never paying the, the real dollar value. You're paying the future value. But if you are a person who collects airdrops or bounties and you are happy when the project when the token rises in value, that can be very beneficial for you. Um, so yeah, it depends on the perspective you have. I personally um, would like to see a little bit less hype, like in this market. Um, I think now you can see, you can find the more serious players um, who are really interested in the business and in blockchain and not just on making the monies. Uh, yeah, you get, and I really I saw a lot of the clients we had um, not, uh, or projects that we listed not to see, not to see. And now you see better quality projects coming up. Uh, a lot of the projects we talk to right now, they already have some private funding, sometimes VC backed, sometimes uh, with angels. And um, so you see that 
they understand they already need to deliver at least an MVP before they start raising money. So you see like the project or the industry is like going to maybe pu maybe puberty right now. <laughs> and hopefully we get to adulthood in like two to four years. Um, but we're still, we're for sure, we're still in very early stages. Yeah. So what are you excited about? Any projects right now? Um, let me check the site real quick because I I'm not really the content person. And the one that jumps out immediately is obviously BitTorrent. Yes. Um, but I'm excited yeah. about projects in general. Yeah. Well, as far as BitTorrent, can someone go on your site and purchase it or get some airdrops? No. no. How does that work? Adwords, yes. Well, you, we're, like I said, we are more of an information place. So you find all the information you need about the airdrop and, and then you get directed to the right places for it. Um, but the BitTorrent airdrop is for Tron holders. So I think you need to buy some Tron first uh, and then you can collect those airdrops. Uh, well, it's really funny because it was getting such a bad rep last year. I mean, to be honest, I was, I'm still a Tron hater. <laughs> Yeah, if you talk about hype uh, just now, then Tron was really good at that. So, yeah, like I said before, I think this Justin uh, Sun is a marketing genius. Uh, uh, but I agree with you. Uh, like I had a, like a rule of thumb personally. If I had five friends that know nothing about crypto ask me about a specific coin, I would ignore the coin for investment because I knew that then it's just hype. Uh, and Tron, everyone was asking me about Tron, so I was like, all right, I'm not. I'm not going to put any money in Tron because I think it's a hype coin. But uh, for now, when I see all of this with the uh, BitTorrent, I have to maybe revise my decision and uh, really check out Tron. Yeah, it's really interesting because, you know, the more I learn about crypto, I remember in the early days of interviewing folks when I didn't know a thing about it, I would run into the Bitcoin maximalist who only invests in Bitcoin. And those usually are veterans who've been in the game for a really long time. And then I met individuals who were all about the altcoins, especially during the bear market, because there was so many, there's so much opportunity mm -hmm. to see uh, the project's moon, if you will. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see how the market has evolved. There are still individuals who obviously are investing in altcoins, and there's still plenty of opportunities. It's just probably requires more work and doing more research at this point. For sure, for sure. And the, what you say, it's, um, I, I noticed that too in my personal network that um, the people that joined 2017, they would have zero Bitcoin in their portfolio and 100% altcoins. Yes. <laughs> I always ask them, but why? Uh, they said, yeah, but... Uh, I think because Bitcoin was too expensive and people yeah. didn't really necessarily... Uh, they felt that having a percentage of Bitcoin didn't make sense. I think that's probably was the rationale, no? Yeah, I think so too. It's the psychology, like I want at least like a full one and not like yes. a, they just behind it. Yeah, exactly. I, I think you're right. I think it's just a big number they see. Uh, I disagree though. I see if Bitcoin 10x, I think a lot of alt altcoins won't 10x. So it's like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm, not a big, I'm not a big believer of Ripple, but a lot of beginners ask me, uh, but well, Ripple can be doing really well. Great they are. Now they have competition. JP Morgan's <laughs> coming. <laughs> I know. Let me let me check the price real quick. But people ask me, will Ripple ever be two hundred dollars? I'm like, I don't think so. But Bitcoin used to be like one dollar. I said, yeah, that's correct. But it's a whole different uh, system they're building. A whole different use case. Yeah. But yeah, people just have they they look at the the numbers, you know. Like Ripple is 30 cents, it might be $100, so I can multiply my money by 300. People have made a lot of money with Ripple, as much as we don't like it as a community for philosophical <laughs> reasons. Well, if anyone makes money, then I'm happy. You know, um, I hope everyone makes money in this industry and I'm a big believer of blockchain in general and the future of blockchain. So let's just see where, where it goes, where where we will evolve into, because for sure we're not at the final stages. Just we be, it will be a smart person developing something on on another smart person developing something on another smart person, and then we get to where we want to be. So let me ask you: Do you think airdrops will ever go away? 
No, I don't think so. I think it's a, it's a user acquisition strategy. I mean, if I walk in the summer on the street here in Rotterdam, I get a free ice cream or a free sample of something. And that's the same as an airdrop. They're just trying to create brand awareness and give me a free sample. So in that case, I think uh, airdrops will always be here. Um, same as PayPal did an air, airdrop in 1998, where every new user just got $10 balance. It's exactly the same strategy there. But what do you do to control the quality of the users you come in? Because when you give anything free, then obviously you don't necessarily get the best quality users, if you will. Yeah. I mean, uh, essentially well, you just get like a broad network of individuals and then it's just harder to really validate whether or not these individuals are going to help the project moving forward. Yeah, I agree, but we are a marketplace, so it's, that's not really our responsibility. We, we, we offer them uh, like eyeballs um, and then it's from them to find the right conversions within those eyeballs. So it's a responsibility of the project. Uh, what we do do is uh, we check for bots. So we have, um, we have some software and things to uh, try to protect the project from bots because obviously we don't want to send bots to a project. But that's basically the only thing uh, we do to protect the project, basically. That's such a valid point. I didn't even think about that. But I mean, for me, I get uh, hit up on Instagram all the time by binary option. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and crypto. I don't know what else. Yeah, and crypto. And actually, it's funny because I have people using my my uh, my info now and creating fake Instagrams. <laughs> well, then you know you made it. <laughs> well, uh, no, but it's really strange that it's something that you only see in the crypto world where, I mean, yeah, because you're right, there's probably a huge problem with bots. Yeah, for sure. And, there's a and it's bunch just of... the beginning, right? It is. It is. And if, if there's something for free, people will try to find ways to exploit that. Um, so yeah, I, that's, a, that's, that's also a hustling. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Thanks. <laughs> that's also hustling on the part of the user side, basically. Uh, they just try to make uh, a few extra tokens and uh, good luck to them. But we, we for sure try to prevent it. <laughs> cool. So any last tips you want to provide you, provide us, sorry, before you let us go? I would just advise the users to stay safe, you know, don't just join uh, random projects to find airdrops. Uh, make sure you verify everything. Uh, we, we try to do the work for you, but do it yourself too. Yeah, most definitely. I think we're good. Well, All right, awesome. nice. Thank you, Martin, for joining us today. I'm super excited. Really fun interview. Yeah, thanks, Luna. Thanks for the opportunity. I like the questions you ask. Uh, it's not only positive, obviously, in any industry. Just um, important that everyone tries to work to move forward. Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank you. Have a good day.